between me and Dusty, I mean Dusty's got a lot of the policy and a big background on, on campaigning and I come from much more of a uh, practical level of installing roofs and just well, basically bullying people into having them initially and now uh, we're being asked to do a lot of them. So we've got quite a nice mixture between us covering the whole system of, of a green roof um, and I think that's what makes the workshops I think work. And also we're genuinely bloody enthusiastic about them. Generally, the way we build buildings and cities is to keep nature away from it. So, well, the driver for me to get involved with Green Roos was a bird here in Deptford called the Black Red Star. We wanted to try and put the habitat for the bird up on new buildings which were going on. That was 12 years ago. And then I got into promoting Green Roos uh, for nature conservation, which is my particular interest. Then we went on through various parties in London and elsewhere in the UK to promote them generally for climate change but always keeping the nature conservation ecosystem services at the front of the conversation. And basically, I think the problem is, is in the construction industry, there is a bit of a tick box engineering system, rather than saying like, how can I make a complete ecosystem service where I'm not only benefiting the building, I'm be benefiting the whole of the urban environment, and I'm also benefiting the ecological environment in terms of wildlife. Another little policy document here, we need a 10% increase in green space in our cities by 2020. The city of London can't plant any trees because there's too much services in the pavements. They cannot plant trees at street level. So for somewhere like the city of London, green roofs become about the only place where they can put additional green space into it. I think green roofs are one of those things you can deliver. It takes in the gardening, it takes in the ecology, it takes in all those things, and green roofs can deliver that in an urban situation. They're easy to do. Uh, and there's no kind of um, mystery about them. And I think that's what we're trying to do on, on the course t today and uh, on, on, on all the workshops really, is just to kind of demystify the whole, the whole green roof thing because people assume it's some sort of complicated uh, uh, system, but it doesn't have to be at all. First thing we're going to do is, there's four holes in the corners. We're going to fix this to these, and these are in effect the joists on our roof. It's basically a corner of your roof. Everyone on the course has been incredibly just so focused and so um, driven to, to, to get things right and we, we've noticed that with the construction you know people are really particular to get things right um, and do things correctly you know and that, that's been a real eye-opener for us on this course. So once you've got it all lined up then obviously you can just fix that deck down. I feel like a cooking program <laughs> This next piece of wood is the 4F. That's going to go on. There's a, there's a much lower proportion of females in the construction industry. It's kind of a, a, a good way to get in on that industry, really, and start there, maybe, and then work into the rest of it. Can you see if you can do it? Well, I used to be a circus performer um, and a theatre performer, and then I started using my juggling to train people. Um, and because juggling is a system, and I talk a lot about ecosystem services, actually this course is the first time ever I've combined my interest in green roofs and juggling. So the juggling, bit of fun as well. Yeah. Try and go right, left, right. I also combined, I used to do a lot of lectures in secondary and sixth form schools on mapping. This is, um, this is a, a right brain note process. And so we did an exercise which uh, all the delegates have been doing throughout where they're mapping all the sort of subjects and topics which creates a little system. What they say is the memory does actually like things framed. You put a border around it, the memory tends to memorise it better. A few of the delegates said that's really good, it's actually helping me deal with what basically we've given a lot of information but it's actually helped to compute that really well so they can go away and they've got sort of a, uh, a revision tool. We've got a whole kind of back catalogue of roofs that I've been installing and Dusty's been promoting for the last 10, 15 years. So we can go back to those roofs with people on the workshop and show them, look, this is what we did 10 years ago, look, this has worked well, this hasn't worked so well, and we've got practical examples that people can look at. And there's not many people that have got that because obviously it's a relatively new thing. So I think that's really important. And I think learning from the basically the mistakes. Uh, they're not a mistake in some respects because any green roof is a fantastic thing, but there's certain things that we did initially that we now think from an ecological point of view is better to do a different way. And that's what we've learned. And hopefully that's what we're going to give to everyone who comes on the workshops. What Tyler is a country park in the 
Thames Gateway, which is southwest Essex and northeast Kent. So here, this is where everything's going to be developed. On. And they did this big visitor centre, and Bug Life, the invertebrate charity, got some money to put the green roof up. And it's been designed for rare insects. What's it, what's so it's trying to put a lot of things in there, which then, you know, they had opportunities. It's got four different substrates on it. It's been planted with plugs and been seeded. Um, it's got a very special material called Litag, which hopefully we're going to try and create a thing called Lichen Heath. It's the only place you find a particular spider. So hopefully over the next two or three years, we will discover whether that spider is starting to live there. And also, that roof is in the heart of the area for two of the UK's rarest bees, the Shrill Carter Bee and the Humble Bumble Bee. And we're hoping, because it's been monitored, that we can show evidence that actually by putting these roofs up, these bees will come to it. It's kind of the culmination, that roof, of all the kind of 10 years we've been, we've been working at, where we've realised that um, to produce an interesting roof, you need a variation of substrate depth, you need a relatively low fertility substrate, and you need that diversity. And we've kind of encompassed that in that one roof. What's so interesting, normally in a garden that would dominate big patches. But on a roof, I don't think these things are going to, they don't dominate out. We've also introduced um, some seed mixes now that we're finding are working really well. And they include a lot of herbs, marjoram, chives, um, thyme, wild basil. And as we were walking around the roof, we felt like we were in the Mediterranean. That whole kind of smell of the roof came up. And I think people were influenced by that as well. I mean, that, and that's a consideration that we hadn't even thought about. You know, to be able to walk around and get the smell as well as the aesthetics, it was great. Um, so, I, I mean, it was one of my favourite roofs and I'm really pleased that people like that because they're the roofs that we really want to get going in. But certainly when I started, um, I was seen as a bit of a nutcase. And green roofs are very marginalised, you know, it's what, what hippies did, you know. But now, most of the major big developments in London are having green roofs. Everything's good about green roofs, really. I can't think of any disadvantages, apart from a little bit of cost. They tick all the boxes, you know, they trap water, they've got excellent wildlife potential, they make the waterproofing last longer on the roof, um, and to be honest, they cheer people up. I mean, they're just people, they're a positive thing for a building, I just think they're, uh, people, people really like them, you know, once they've got them. Since 2008, we now have the London policy which is now starting to really drive green roofs, what they call the mayoral referrals, but also the boroughs now have to set targets for the green roofs that are being installed. That's actually filtering out now nationally. Sheffield have a policy, and other cities are developing policies too. So it is changing, and I suspect within four or five years, green roofs will just be part of the, um, the general approach to urban design.